currently with 7.30 left in the first half. I am joined again by Alex Heichelbeck and Ben Subcheck. And Ben, if you are the captain of WKU, what are you saying to your team right now down 2-0? you got to coordinate some things up at the front of the line. You have to go past half court and get them scared of you a little bit. Just, just a little bit. you got to intimidate them somewhat so that you can start playing a little more aggressive. That's all there is to it. It looks like Zach Kelsey, uh, number 77 for WKU, got a kill but also was killed off the opening rush. Another WKU player just went down there. And number 44, Josh Wynn sliding backwards. Everett Taylor, number 20, coming to his rescue. He may, uh, number 44 for Wester made two fantastic catches. Uh, early last point as well. Him and the other Josh, Josh Hicks. It's Josh Wynn and Josh Hicks. The Joshes, both very good players for WKU, and they will be crucial during the, all of their day one matchups, seeing how WKU's record shakes out at the end of day one. I want everybody to notice this. Saginaw Valley has people up even if they don't have a ball. When WKU advances for a counterattack, it's only two players. And as soon as they throw one, it's so easy for Saginaw to pick them out or pick them off. Saginaw bringing all of these people up are making it so much more difficult for WKU. It's much more intimidating when yeah. you see five or six players coming at you instead of just one or two. One minute into the game, Western already with five players off the court. Six. Six now. Six now, yeah. It looks like Nick, Captain Nick Johnson has gone out as well. So a lot of really good talent out for WKU right now. They're going to have to have somebody step up and make some big plays, and I would like to see it be number eight, Josh Hicks, who had such a standout performance in the All-Star game for the world and had a really nice catch in that first point. We'll see if he can get something going for the toppers here in this third point. Got about five and a half minutes left as we wind down this first half. And there are those vicious Saginaw Valley counters taking out Big Bird, Alex Sorrells, and Josh Hicks. So WKU losing two of its best players right there. And Bennett goes back to what you're saying. Those Saginaw Valley counters are just devastating WKU right now. They're throwing one at a time, too. Um, we just saw uh, one of WKU's players get, uh, get caught. And there's another one, number 88, going down, too. They're throwing one at a time, and you're just, you're, that's not a winning formula, plain and simple. I think a lot of people were very down on Saginaw Valley uh, as kind of the weak link in the Michigan foursome this year, but they have looked every bit uh, as impressive as we have come to expect from that program here in this first half against WKU. Ben, I believe uh, we both have an experience playing Saginaw Valley uh, from Nationals at Grand Valley in uh, 2009. You know, I don't think there was nearly as much bad blood between that team and ours at that time. Do you, would you agree with that? I would agree. I think over time, with the amount of close games that we've had, these two teams have kind of developed a lot of animosity because they're so, I don't know, it's just a high-energy game. You can really feel it. Uh, whatever it is about Saginaw just really boils WKU's blood. Uh, and you know what? Hey, rivalries make games a whole lot more fun. They make them a whole lot more interesting. Uh, but when we played uh, Saginaw back at Grand Valley many, many moons ago, we, we had a really good time. In fact, it was the second day of the tournament, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And we were all so tired, and we lost the first couple points. And then we just were like, you know what? You want to have a fun point? And what do we play? Zombie? Something like, Something like that. Or and leopard point. Or leopard point. That's always a good one. And so, you know, as, as intense as this one is, I, I, I wish that, you know, everybody could have those kind of experiences as well. But, hey. You hope you do have those experiences at so, Nationals. Uh, at this point, we've got 425 left in the game. Uh, Saginaw with their entire team still in. Western with only two. What do you do at this point as a captain? What do you think that timeout was for? What do you think words were exchanged there? You're not going to win this point. That much is obvious. So my philosophy is always get out quickly and maybe try to make something happen in the, final, in the final four minutes of this game. But now they have crossed the threshold, and so any time at the end of this half will be tacked on to the second half. So at this point, I think you try to survive for these final four minutes and see if you can take Saginaw into the half up or down 3-0. So they are down to number 32, Hunter Dickinson, as their last player. 
Hunter, again, the alternate captain for WKU. The only thing that you can really do here is try to keep the balls on your side so that they have fewer and fewer throws at you, and you keep one ball in your hand and you just go down like he's doing exactly like that. You just go down, and you need to not throw right at a point. You need to not throw an easy catch, so that will be um, another Saginaw point there. I think Saginaw goes up 3-0, if I'm not mistaken. And we have 320 left in this first half that will be transferred to the end of the second half. So we will see you all in just a few minutes for half number two of WKU versus Saginaw Valley at Nationals 2015.